Hello and welcome to the People's Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of December 18th, 2020. Well, to start off with, we have Senator Mitt Romney, Republican from Utah, saying on Thursday that it was stunning that the White House did not respond to this cyber attack that was perpetrated on our nation by Russia. And then plus, Pelosi also got the COVID-19 vaccine shot, while Mitch McConnell hasn't yet. Isn't that pretty bad? Oh, and plus, Donald Trump's Twitter account has been hacked. They basically guessed his password on the Twitter, is what they're saying. But come on, we all already know that Donald Trump gave his password out, and he's trying to say that it was hacked to take the blame off himself, because that's just how Trump works. And basically, Trump also has the delusion that he has actually won the elections. And in fact, he does not plan to move out of the White House on January 20th. So he'll be forcibly removed by the military under the order of Joe Biden. And one in five inmates in prisons, basically in the United States, had COVID-19. 1,700 prisoners so far have died from COVID-19 in United States prisons. Plus, um, eight nuns died from COVID-19 complications in the past week in a Wisconsin uh, convent. And still, no bid on who wants to blow up Trump's, uh, basically, casino in Atlantic City for charity. <laughs> Please, I'd, if they hadn't let me blow it up for free, I'd be so happy. Because I'd love to just blow up Trump's casino. Because that'd be awesome. But, and basically, the neighbors of Trump, as I reported yesterday, they don't want him back there at all because of his fiasco as president. Well, now they're actually taking up legal action to keep him from moving back in after he leaves the White House. That isn't pretty bad. And Coca-Cola is laying off 2,200 of its employees, or 17% of its global workforce, as it pairs its brand. And on stimulus news, we have Bernie Sanders fighting for the direct payment, or stimulus checks basically, of a $1,200 amount on the Senate floor today. In fact, I have a clip out for you right here. And more people are dying than ever before, literally day after day. Now, we all hope and pray that the new vaccine will be distributed as quickly as possible and that it will put an end to this nightmare. But today, the truth is that millions of low-income and middle-class families are suffering in a way that they have not suffered since the Great Depression of the 30s. Today, the reality is that over half of our workers are living paycheck to paycheck, trying to survive on a starvation wage of 10 or 12 bucks an hour. The reality is that millions of our senior citizens are trapped in their homes, unable to see their kids or their grandchildren, unable to go to a grocery store, and many of them are trying to get by on twelve, fourteen thousand dollars a year social security and scared that they may come down with the virus and die. In addition, millions more with disabilities are suffering. Further in our country today, one out of four workers are either unemployed or make less than twenty thousand dollars a year. And in the midst of this pandemic, because we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a right, in the midst of this pandemic, worst health care crisis in 100 years, over 90 million Americans are uninsured or underinsured and unable to go to a doctor when they need to. Further, we have the worst eviction crisis in modern history. Some 30 million families worried that because they cannot pay their rent, they may end up out on the street. 
That is, Mr. President, where we are today economically. And if this country means anything, if democracy means anything, if the U.S. government means anything, it means that we cannot turn our backs on this suffering. Thank my colleague. I want to join my friend Senator Sanders to support his amendment to give $1,200 in direct financial support to the American people in the year-end emergency relief bill. Now, this effort should not subtract from any other program already in the bill, like enhanced unemployment, aid to small business, education, health care, or another provision. We don't need to offset the cost or cut from elsewhere in the bill to make sure the stimulus checks are $1,200 for each adult and then money for children and others, as he will elaborate. And we are still waiting on Congress to finish making this stimulus deal. And this is the last day of the stopgap measure they put on the government before government shuts down. Uh, they, they're either going to let it shut down for the weekend and resume and try to reopen it up on Monday, or they're going to do another stopgap measure for a few days to try to hammer this deal out and get it done. As more information comes available, I will let you guys know. This was part of what I like to do. But the good news is Mr. McConnell said that he was optimistic right now than he was last night about the clinching coronavirus deal. About clinching a coronavirus deal, but basically. And that the Washington Post reported that uh, there might be two thousand dollars stimulus checks, says a says a what says a White House aide that to the Washington Post. But I really wouldn't put my uh, money on it because basically Trump is irrelevant as president and irrelevant to his own party members. I mean, can you really blame them for considering him to be irrelevant since he's a big whiny crybaby? He's still crying over the elections. He's still fighting over elections even though he's lost. And he's trying to rally up his Trump supporters, or as I like to call them, they're his Trump pets. To just try to start a civil war against America. Isn't that just messed up? And right now, we know Republicans are trying to nickel and dime everything as far as, and that includes also the stimulus checks. And I'll tell you why. Give me one second here. Um, today, Josh Hawley is going to ask the Senate to vote on giving $1,200 stimulus checks instead of $600 ones. But most likely, this idea will be shot down by Republicans. Democrats and Republicans are fighting over the eviction memoratorium and if it could should be extended, as well as they're also fighting over rental assistance. And uh, here's the point where I'm talking about the tiny nickel and dime you. On the um, enhanced unemployment, Republicans are reportedly seeking to exclude people receiving less than $100 a week in regular state benefits from qualifying for $300 additional per week enhanced unemployment. So Republicans further want to, are basically trying to cut the, the unemployment funding. So basically they're saying, look, they, they, they already talked about uh, excluding um, the people that are getting the enhanced unemployment from receiving a stimulus check. Now they're talking about excluding people that make $100 or less from receiving more than receiving the three hundred dollars unemployment, how bad is that for our greedy Republicans? I mean, see, this this is the this is the whole point I'm trying to get. They don't see the need to help the people. They need to see the need to keep the money in the bank account, so they can spend it on themselves. I mean, I think earlier was it earlier this year in one of my programs I talked about how when the senator gets voted back into office or gets voted into office, how they get a $60,000 expenditure bill to remodel their office the way they want it. Leave it the way it is. Don't give them $60,000 because come on, that's a lot of money. I mean, think about it. You have like, what, 100 members in the Senate and over 100 members in the House. That's like over, that's like what? <laughs> Holy crap. That's over two million, that's like over $2 million, $3 million right there just for modeling purposes. And then they want to give the, the president, when he goes into office, on this thing, I can actually understand that, but they want to give him $120,000, I think, to remodel the White House. In Biden's defense, 
I'd want to remodel the White House too because I wouldn't want really to go in there after Trump stenched it up, you know. But still, I mean, with all this money they're handing out to the senators and the and the House representative people to remodel their their offices when it's not needed. But this is also my take on why I think we're getting hurt so much is because they're giving money out for rich and not caring about the poor. But I'll talk, I'll talk about that at a different time. But until then, this is actually the end of my broadcast. So I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. I will broadcast again to you guys again tomorrow or Sunday, if not both. So until then, you guys have a wonderful evening. Have an excellent night, and I'll see you later. Bye.